You know, to many, he's still the patron, patron saint to the Boston Red Sox. I know for a fact before the Red Sox won all their World Series over the last 20 years, when they were up against it or needed a playoff win, he prayed to this guy for obvious reasons. He's probably one of the best players in Red Sox history to never have a full career with his favorite team. And he was almost killed on a field in the worst beating incident of all time. So today we're going to pay tribute to the late great and the very, very respected and loved Tony C., Tony Caligliero. Now, Antonio, Antony, uh, Anthony Richard Caligliero, born January 745, uh, World War II baby, was nicknamed Tony C. and Koenig, was a Major League Baseball outfielder and right-handed batter who played for the Red Sox from 64 to 67, 69 to 70, 75, and the Angels in 71. Born in the great community of Revere, Massachusetts, was a 62 graduate of St. Mary's High School in Lynn, Massachusetts. Canigliero started his MLB career as a highly regarded teenager, hitting a home run in his first at bat during his home field debut in 1964. Now, during the Red Sox impossible dream season <clears throat> of 1967, he was hit in the face by a pitch that caused a severe eye injury and derailed his career. Though he would make a comeback uh, from the near death experience. His career was not the same afterwards. Now, Canigliero was signed by the Red Sox in 1962 at a young age of 17. In 63, he batted 363 with 24 homers, playing for the Wellsville Red Sox in the New York Penn League, after which he was called up to the majors. During his 64 rookie season, he batted 290 with 24 homers and 52 RBIs in 111 games, but broke his arm and his toes in August. In his first at bat at Fenway, he had a towering home run <clears throat> in the second inning against the White Sox. Now, in his sophomore season of 65, he led the league in homers with 32, becoming the youngest home run champion in AL history. He was selected for the All-Star game in 67, and at that season, at age 22, he not only reached a career total of 100 home runs, but attained that milestone at the youngest age ever for an American League uh, player. Now, the right fielder? Uh, was having a great career, but tragedy struck on August 18, 67, and some Red Sox call it uh, Tony C. Day. The Red Sox were playing the Angels at Fenway Park. Caniglero, batting against a usually reliable Jack Hamilton, was hit by a pitch on his left cheekbone and was carried off the field on a stretcher. He sustained a linear fracture of the left cheekbone and a dislocated jaw with severe damage to his left retina. The batting helmet he was wearing did not have the protective ear flap, has since become standard, partly due to this incident. Now, a year and a half later, where a lot of people felt he had no chance to come back, he made a remarkable return, hitting 20 homers and 82 RBIs in 141 games, earning Comeback Player of the Year honors. In 1970, he reached career-high numbers in home runs with 36 and RBI uh, 116. However, being injured in the impossible dream season to many, cost the Red Sox their World Series, and it could have been their only World Series victory of the last 100 years were it not for David Ortiz and the great pitching staff of the modern Red Sox. Now, that season, 1970, he and his talented brother Billy formed two-thirds of the Red Sox outfield. After a stint with the Angels in 71, he returned to the Red Sox briefly in 75 as a DH, but he was forced to retire because his eyesight has been, had been permanently damaged. Now, he batted 267, with 162 home runs and 501 RBIs during his 802-game Red Sox career. With the Angels, he had 222 with four homers and 15 RBIs in 74 games. Again, he's the second youngest player to hit his 100 homer after the great Mallott and the youngest American League player to do so. Now, after his retirement in the fall of 75, he opened a restaurant in Providence managed by his brother Billy. In September of that same year, he was hired by WJR TV in Providence as a sports anchor. And of course, Providence uh, as big in Boston sports or what they call Massachusetts area sports for years. Despite being a Rhode Island, Providence is considered, a, you know, one of the biggest Massachusetts markets out there. In August of 76, he moved to a similar position at KGO TV Channel 7 in San Francisco. So everything uh, seemed to be going well in him, but unfortunately, on January 1982, the then 37-year-old Canigliero was a, in Boston to interview for a broadcasting position when he suffered a heart attack while being driven to the airport by his brother Billy. 
Shortly thereafter, he suffered a stroke and lapsed into a coma. Canigliero never fully recovered and suffered slight brain damage due to the stroke until his death more than eight years later. In February 40, 1990, complications hit him again, and he died at the age of 45 of pneumonia and kidney failure. In commemoration, the Red Sox wore black armbands that season. He is interred at the uh, the very uh, iconic Holy Cross Cemetery in Malden, Massachusetts, which I visited. And I hadn't, I didn't have a, a chance to visit his grave, but a lot of Boston fans do visit on a regular basis. Now, since 1990, the Tony C Award or Tony Klinger Award, instituted by the Red Sox after his passing, is given annually to the MLB player who best overcomes obstacles and adversities through the attributes of spirit, determination, and courage that was considered. Tony's trademarks. Now, from the start of 2007 season, Canigliero's corner became iconic as Red Sox ownership added a new 200 seat bleacher section on the right field roof, providing an additional 16,200 available tickets for the full season. It was named Canigliero's Corner in honor of the slugger. The seats were being marketed specifically towards families, and by May 2007, the section was reserved for Red Sox Nation members on Saturdays and Red Sox Kid Nation members on Sundays. The seats, unfortunately, were removed prior to the start of the 2009 season. So if Canigliario would have stayed healthy, would have, should have, could have. Could one or two of the World Series titles that the, that the Yankees won in the 70s and maybe one of the, the A's titles, uh, could could he won it? Well, here's the, here's the perspective. 1975, he came very close. He had a very strong team, 77-78. So that could be two full World Series. One player hitting 25 homers, 90 RBIs, hitting 270 makes a big difference. You look at the Blue Jays, how they collapsed, where some of their major players that they traded for and signed basically were hitting this year 18 homers, 60 RBIs. You need a 25-80, or as my dad used to call it, Tony C numbers. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to think about this. Boston Red Sox legacy, all the losing and the negativity and uh, the, the tragedy, right? Is all pretty well gone away, but for years and years and years from the time the impossible dream died with Tony C really getting injured, he would have won a World Series that year, to Ortiz uh, with the major comeback in 2004. So that's literally 37 years where he felt the pain of every loss, like the loss of Tony C. And when he passed away later on, it was hard. 1990 was hard in the Red Sox too in the playoffs, of course. But ladies and gentlemen, Every Red Sox fan that's over the age of 50 loves Tony C. He probably pray for him every night. So this podcast is for you guys, my friends and family in Massachusetts, especially Lynn, Massachusetts. We have followers of, of uh, that community sports on the channel. And let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we lost Howie Marins. Montreal Canadiens fans, we still think about him. Not saying Conigliero was another Howie Marins. But someone full of talent, young, motivated. He motivated a lot of people. Good with the kids. Good with everybody. He's really missed. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you like what you're doing here, give us a like, comment, subscribe, or share. Any Red Sox requests, uh, don't be scared to give some because, as we know, every time you scratch a Blue Jay fan, you find a Red Sox fan. Have a good one. Bye.